Good evening, good evening out there, basketball world. This is Mike Melton from Inner Spotlight Podcast. And tonight we got a special segment called Tough Talk Tuesday. And and we generated this so I could bring different guests on and 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 get their feelings off certain topics in basketball, certain happenings, and get their feelings on how they and get them a chance to express how they really feel about these topics and stuff. And of course, I chime in. And we'll try to have some fun with these subjects, man. Tonight, I got a very special guest on tonight, man. Um, I love this brother. My, um, one of my best friends was my roommate in college. And I always give him his props because if it wasn't for him, I don't even know if I would be, if I would have gotten knee deep in this basketball game as I did. My man, Randy Smith, squirrel the world, took me to my first big time game. Up at Keene, we went down to Elizabeth to see uh St. Pat's and um and Elizabeth playing the Union County Championship. And I at leading up to that, I thought that I had seen the best basketball in the world, man, from Trenton. And then that day, my whole projection on basketball changed, man. Welcome, Squirrel of the World. This ain't your first time here, but welcome on, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I like that introduction. I Indeed, like that introduction. I always gotta keep it real. I gotta keep it real on. <laughs> On where it started at for me, you know what I mean. I can't be on faking no jacks about that, and that turned it on. And we had many nights up at college in the room debating about different things, man. So I was like, I done seen a lot of your different posts about different things that's going on in basketball, man. So what was better than if your boy got a platform to let you come on and 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 be able to talk about the the different topics that we bring up, man? A close, yeah. a couple of them are close. To, close to home to you and a lot of things that you like to talk about and we're gonna take it from there man so right before we do that it is the elizabeth um the dunn trip it is um st pat's uh versus elizabeth union county tournament that is true but we we never speak about it though maybe the s's might have been steiner shabazz yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if, if you allow me, I'll just say that real quick and just to give a quick tidbit on you and I in terms of how we always were about basketball. <laughs> so, and everybody knows that my, my college roommate, Mr. Melton, is, um, he's from Trenton. So it was a, a, a great team down there uh, with the Steiner team. Um, <laughs> a kid by the name of Dante Jones went to Rucker. Then he <laughs> transferred to Duke. But at the time, he was at, he was at Steiner. And um, great player, you know what I'm saying? Um, at the time, you know, probably a top 50 player. I mean, um, great player. So they were, long story short, they were playing North Shabazz. So Mike, like, yeah, Steiner about to play Shabazz. Man, Shabazz, man, the team all look about to get blown out. I'm like, <laughs> so we watching everything. I'm like, well, Mike, well, who, who is Steiner guards? He pointed to me like, yeah, the big old brothers. He pointed to show me the guy. <laughs> So I, I turned to Mike and I said, um, Mike, they about to lose by 30. He like, man, that little team. I said, Mike, didn't they guard? He said, yeah, Dante Jones, he about to go to Rutgers. And he down said, well, Mike, they about to lose by 30. Long story short, we make a bet. And um, Shabazz, sure enough, smacks Steiner up. Uh, for all my um, for all my North Jersey people, this is the Shabazz team. This is uh, Khalid Kersey. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, God bless the dead. Um, uh, Fee. Um, mm -hmm. He went on to have a great career at Rutgers playing football, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and also was um, uh, one of the Barino brother um, one of the Barino brothers um, um, that also played there. Um, Pooh. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the brothers who played there, they had a um, a gritty team, a three guard offense. Um, you know, pressed a lot, high up tempo, played real fast or whatever like that. And you know, if you anything about high school basketball, the guard play is going to dictate the game. So that's mm -hmm. how I kind of knew that. And um, just giving that little side story to um, indeed, you indeed, and I, indeed, and some indeed, of the things that we indeed. used to do. Indeed, indeed. So, man, without further ado, let's get at it, man. First order of business. Cal leaves Kentucky wow, and goes to Arkansas. Heavy, heavy early. Okay. Heavy. Let's go. Cal leaves Kentucky, goes to Arkansas. What happened, bro? 
do you really want me to start it that way? Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. No, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that player in a little bit, but what happened with Cal? Why did he, why did he leave? Give me, give me the, give me your whole breakdown. What happened with, what happened with Cal um, is, um, it's something that occurred on multiple fronts. Cal's affinity or loyalty to players mm. may have been, let's call that A. B was Cal's stature in terms of the Lexington community and how this is a blue blood of basketball and how a person of his stature actually superseded even Kentucky basketball. Be, he, be, he was a person that was able to even overshadow all the titles and the past history just by his stature. So let's call that B. But then C actually was, was this, his affinity for what he deems as player first also may have been his, his downfall because he was more in tune with the player instead of being in tune with what the university and maybe the community were wanting in terms of a consistency in championships. So that's probably – I'll leave it at those three because I know also where I would like to go and take it, but I want to just say that to it into a little later. Oh, um, I think that at the end of the day, I was I went out there and I saw the atmosphere, and I told you that his days was numbered when I was out there. Like, they don't care about no one and dones. I talked to several Kentucky fans when I was out there. And they said the last time we won the championship was 2012 or whatever. And they was like, that's all they care about. They don't care about no one and done. They was like, what do one and done do for us? You get what I'm saying? I think that he lost mad key assistance. I think that he had a lot of pressure to win. The last time he uh the uh last time he made a run was like 2015 or something like that. I think that um well, the Fox and team. I think that the oh, one and done, I, I think that the one and done thing ran its course. I think that he didn't switch quick enough with the transfer portal, the transfer portal way of playing, and a, and a, and a one and done thing ran its course. And I don't know if he had to fire no more to really do the gritty stuff and 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 really be hands on like he was before when he when he had that hunger. I think he I think the success uh came up in terms of all the pros that was coming out and he got caught in that mix and he, and he and he forgot the reason he came. He came well, because Kentucky want people to win championships, bro. But let's let's think about this. He may have very well had a number 1 seed pre-COVID. He also is a Luke May shot away from final four again. If we took John Calipari resume and we really looked at it as a whole. And let's give you another example of another blue blood. Let's take mm -hmm. North Carolina. And let's take their legendary coach, Dean Smith, right? Mm -hmm. We can sit back and we could talk about the plethora of players, the, the Jameses and the Carters, the Wallaces and the Stackhouses and all this. His two titles come from two mistakes. We got the we got the 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 Brown turnover, mm -hmm. and we got the Chris Weber timeout. Or he mm -hmm. would have a donut. He's mm -hmm. not looked at or viewed any differently or he's not any less revered with his lack of championships because they by and large recognized how still overwhelmingly he had the program at a height. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is in my humble opinion of why Cal is a little bit more vilified is because he put the focus not on alumni even though if you go listen to DeMarcus Cousins or any other former players, they say the campus looks ridiculously different in the 15-year Cal era, meaning the money. Mm -hmm. But he turned and made the focus on the players. That's why it's funny. Speaking of DeMarcus Cousins, he tells the story of if you want to come back, you'll be taking care of my family. If you leave, you'll be taking care of yours. That's not what Blue Blood Kentucky want to hear. They want a DeMarcus Cousins. Let's Let's do the easy route, right? Let's just tell a couple of kids next year. Hold on a second. Next year, I get to you know stockpile, have veteran people, and we'll we'll win one. We'll go ahead and we'll win one every four years. We'll win one because I done took all these five stars. I done held some back. Did it for personal achievement, and 
we won one, and we won one. But however, then you get these players and they fizzle out. The allure of Kentucky and why it has became such a destination, and it's always have been, but even more so under Cal, is because they see the plethora of people that he has made, that he has got. He's made them play one way. Mm-hmm. He made them play together, and then they became all stars and everything or whatever on the NBA level like that. And still, and still spoke highly. BBN, BBN, BBN. They always still talk about it. They always still come back to support, and the team stays at a level. So I ask the question. I only pose the question to you: Is it better for us to go ahead and take? Let's just go to North Carolina approach, where we're going to get the May, the Felton, McCants, and this, that, and this. And we're going to get this team of these five-star players that kind of stay between three and four years. And we're going to get these people, and they're going to stay, and they're going to play. And we won one out of four or whatever. But those guys tend to fizzle out. And that was a known thing where they're actually saying, what was the last good North Carolina player like, what was the last good North Carolina player? I believe that hurts them in a bit, in a way now, in terms of their recruiting process now. Now they are getting their five stars. They're just not getting their pick of five stars. Whereas Cal walks into a gym, he picks. And that's why he said he could shuffle the deck and restart again. But if the we problem look at is, the, the, the problem is that'll work in the Metropolitan. It, it worked at first. But it's not going to work in a town where all you got is that team. See, mm-hmm. these people, they up there. When I was out there, one of the guys told me straight up, one of the problems is we don't ever get to know the kids. We got these kids coming in here, coming in our town, and they only here for like seven months. And then they gone. You get what I'm saying? So how do how do we, we, we don't even feel attached to our program no more. This is ours. So they didn't care about the one and done stuff. They wanted to have, hold on, let me finish. They wanted to have relationships with the kids. They wanted to, to carry on the tradition. All they cared about was trying to cut down that net. They said the one and done does nothing for us as a, as a school. Mike, I agree with you. But what we not what we're not looking at is, is, and this is what I see from watching these games. When you look at a Kentucky basketball game, and I don't want to get too politicized in this. But it, for prime example, when I think of Fox, Monk, um, Adebayo, and them losing to North Carolina, a team that they beat earlier in that season easily, mm-hmm. easy by double figures, you look at the beginning of that game, what happens? That backcourt is in foul trouble. The game is now being played different. They done slowed the game down. We got a Luke May shot, fifth-year guy. He makes, the, he makes the shot, and you guys are out of there. And you guys are out of there. I said all that to say, personally, I believe he was going to be officiated different because his ideology was not one that was particularly for the masses. People didn't people didn't want that to continue. Mm-hmm. But this is why I didn't understand why Kentucky may have didn't lay off. Because if you heard his last conversation, he said. Maybe what I can maybe I can do in the midst of that talent is add a more mature presence in the midst of that talent, and we can just pivot and move on from there. So he said everything that was perfect in terms of what was to be done, but what we didn't get to yet is it's gonna be the back and forth that he's having with the AD, and we know how men and we are with power. This mm-hmm. coach has the ultimate autonomy, like. There's nothing you really can say to me. The money, the the what every the faculty is being paid even more. The buildings I put up is even more. It, uh, of course, with Kentucky, we already sold. We always sold out. So that's not it. The merchandising, the number one. There's no there's no school. In I'm here. No that's not I'm number hearing. one. They're making the money, but they didn't want. They wanted the honey as well. Which I, I, I I'm a fan. I, I understand. I'm hearing that it was a um. It was a, a a situation. It could be a rumor, but it was a situation where one of the heavy boosters that 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 plug with the NIL wanted one of the kids to do like this. They was running for politics and wanted one of the kids to be a part of their 
campaign thing, and he wouldn't allow the kid to be a part of it. Now, this is only rumors of what I heard. He didn't want the kid to be a part of it, and they pulled their support. And that was one of the big uh, uh, joints that pulled the support. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So now my next thing is that's your squad. You always said this your second squad. Mm -hmm. You love that. You love that. <laughs> Can they recover? You know, say that again? Can they recover? Oh yes, that's not. Um, well, right now, did you see? Did you see the introduction of Mark Pope? Did you? No, I saw happened? Boogie Flan and that other kid uh, decommit. Of course, you're not gonna look. look let's be honest about it. <laughs> that's what you're I saw. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get the best point guard because this that's not gonna happen this year. But you and, 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 and I saw and I saw uh uh UMass oh, UMass and Memphis ain't never been the same since he left. But this is Kentucky. This is not UMass and Memphis. Let's okay, be honest. Okay, okay. All right, so, so tell me the process already, you saw what the they're going to do. Tell me the, the process bus, what they're going to do. Yeah, when you saw them bring the bus inside the arena and poke it out to a packed house that had probably another 50,000 outside that couldn't get in, trust and believe. Trust and believe. The money will be there, the NIL will be there, and they will recoup. This season, they're going to be highly competitive already because of what they're going to be able to do in the portal. They're going to be a very tough out. Now, just to pivot, pivot away from that is what you got in the same conference is a man who's looking to prove you wrong. That's what I was about to get to. This dude. So man, this I, I know where you're <laughs> going with it. I have a I have a lot of love for Coach um, Cal um, because we um, have a lot of the same um, ideologies in terms of players mm -hmm. and the treatment of players. And um, so. I have a I have a lot of I have a lot of respect for I'll have a lot of respect for him in that in that. But I'm not naive enough to not understand the politics of the situation and how in Lexington they're gonna want to see banners and stuff like that go up. So they're gonna want to see that stuff go up. So I get that too. I just think that this wasn't the proper time for that transition. And to be honest with you, I love the Pope hire, but I think the more Let's call it swaggier pick would have been mm. Rondo. Mm. Mm. So now, how quick that. do how how quick do Cal get things going and raise a back line? Instantly, they will finish mm. top ten in the country. I wouldn't be surprised. That's a Final Four team in one year, bro. Watch this. You what you did was you went and took this man who told you who said everything that you wanted to hear. Maybe I should add, and I'm gonna call it what it is. I should add some goons to go with my talent. Mm -hmm. He you he just told you that. He just told you that maybe I should do that. Well, let's just see where Boogie Flan and all of them end up. Let's just see if it was Kentucky and and Big Blue Nation, or was it the coach? Mm -hmm. All right, next up. DJ Wagner hits transfer portal. Now, was it a good decision? What level should he go to? Well, he's not going far. He's only going about X amount of minutes away. Mm. Yeah, he's going. He's 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 going to Louisville. But to be honest, where he should go is not Louisville. Where he should go? He should go to Rutgers. Why? Because he's going to be close to home. He's going to be championed at Rutgers. He's going to feel more comfortable. And when he's comfortable, he shoots better. Mm. Mm. So do give me a whole breakdown of his game. Do you think that that was the place for him from the beginning, Kentucky? If I gave you a breakdown of his game, and you know we've had uh, conversations and stuff about this before, Um He's an angle player. He pl he plays on angles. He knows how to um he knows how to split, get to the lane, and but the problem is he doesn't have the athleticism to go with the way that he plays or mm -hmm. the length to go with the way that he plays. Mm -hmm. So when he goes, you know, stutter, hard dribble, pound, crossover, hop step in the lane, and he goes into the hoop to, to almost the scoop into the. The hook lay, mm -hmm. he doesn't possess the vertical enough to get it off the way he pops did. Mm -hmm. So now it's a thing whereas he needs more in between now. So that's where the polish comes in. He needs the floater. He needs the stuff to 
because he's strong. He's a person who, who has the strength to do it. He doesn't have the athleticism to do it. So he has to pick his spots and angles. So he'll be better off by being able to draw a person a little bit more out. So the long arms and stuff he got, he could finish around the cup. But he's a he's not a shooter. He's not a passer. He's not tall enough to be a two. And he's not, you know, a, a general enough to be a one. What he has to become is a commodity, whereas he is able to be the inverted guard where he could play both guard positions. He has to defend, but it's a simple thing. It is the gym, it is the jump shot, and it's the non-leaving thing. He has to become, and oh, quite he could easily be doing this, but it's different when you have no fear of missing than when you going like this and it's Reed Shepard. That's what I was getting into next. Do you think Reed Shepard having the, the uh, bloodline dad was the, uh, at Kentucky, him coming there, do you think that added – too much pressure and, and and made the situation not only uncomfortable for him, but uncomfortable for Cal. I'm going to tell you what happened. I believe they thought that Reed Shepard was going to be a two to three year guy. And I'm talking about, and that's, I, they probably thought Reed Shepard might even be a four year player. That purest Kentucky blue blood kid who stayed the years, eventually won the championship and, you know, ended up being the governor of Kentucky one day. I believe they slept on Reed game. And what happened was Reed was better than they originally thought he was going to be faster. I wouldn't say better than they thought he could be, but he was he was much more advanced than they thought that they was when he originally brought him in. The problem that came, and this is the reason why Cal is in Arkansas now. The community saw the games and said, hey, why is he on the bench? And why is he starting when he is clearly the better player? I said this one time before. I thought when SEC tournament came, the transition should have been had, whereas Wagner went to the bench and them kids were starting. That would have been the olive wrench that would have been extended to the Lexington community, letting them know that I am aware. But I think... Cal's thought process is if I take this kid and I put him on the bench, I may very well lose him. Indeed, indeed. Um, um, also, I just think that when you look at it in terms of the point total, we average only three more points than him, almost four. But it's a whole different uh, aura out there when you're playing with that confidence of understanding that, like, yo, not only – I got coach behind me, but I got all this crowd behind me too. You get what I'm saying? And that's yep. not making an excuse for the young fella because you got to perform on the court. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I just thought even before going in, I didn't like the Kentucky spot because I just thought that he would have played more comfortable if he would have went to Louisville with the uh, with the assistant coach over there and his grandfather uh, being one of the assistants. You know what I'm saying? I. I thought even though and 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 it probably would have took one or two years for him to develop, but I think that he would have been more comfortable being able to play through his mistakes. Um well, so then you're speaking about the fact that he doesn't have that caliber of player behind him, so he knows it's it's almost back to if you watched him in high school, oh, he would make threes, he would make jump shots is because he had no fear. Now at Kentucky. He had he had that fear of yo, I'm missing him. It's not going well. Bonk, here go the thing. And this and this guy come in, he the number one three point shooter in the country. But He's when you really look at it though, when you really look at high school, it ain't that many high schools that got that anyway, besides the Mount Vern or one of them type of spots. But, when you look at college, it ain't that many college that got that, except for Kentucky or or Duke or a UConn now. It ain't that many colleges where you really got to worry about that other All-American coming in behind you, bro. But I think what he needed was a jolt of competition. I'll give you, I'll give you like Kentucky in the beginning of the season when they played the tournament in Canada. He was playing good ball. I think I spoke to you about that. He mm -hmm. was playing good ball. His confidence, his confidence was high. I think because that was a foreign gym, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, all blue going on in the gym. 
Mm-hmm. I think he was, he was, and he played, and I think the competition level wasn't SEC, and it wasn't that them them dog fight, them blood games, like mm-hmm. like Kentucky in the building today. The mm-hmm. whole community is shut down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything is rocking and rolling and going, and the game is at such a height. I think he played better then because, quite frankly, the competition was there. And I I don't want to sound wrong saying that he's not he's 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 afraid uh, he's afraid of the competition. But I told you this: I saw the game when they played Mount Verde. When they played Mount Verde in high school, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not talking about you beating Mount Verde. Mount Verde is clearly a better team. I'm not talking about that. I'm from Jersey. I played the point. There's not a time in my life I thought I couldn't move a person out from in front of me with my ball hands on. Mm-hmm. And I watched him struggle with a bigger defender, a person that was longer, it long longer or not as long as him, and him finishing over. And him finishing over um, size, I said, I said, wow. And it wasn't that I expected him, he got to go give Mount Verde 50 points. No, no. I was looking at it comprehensively to the fact that I wanted him to be able to, like, move this person out from in front of him, get to the lane, whether and whether or not it dropped or not or not. He had trouble moving people out from in front of him with his ball handling. I was very scared of that. I was very scared of that. Because a jersey guard, we can manipulate anybody. Mm. What he is, what he is was a person. And again, this speaks to it speaks to the fact that sometimes you may need to now go to a place where everything is not talcum powder and sugar. You may need Kevin Boyle to have you get you out your comfort zone. Because now you in Kentucky, guess what? The whole town is not going to love you. Mm. Everybody is, everything now is not going to be, oh, that's DJ. They're going to say, hey, the Wagner kid is not playing better than the Dillingham kid. Or he's not playing this. Big Blue Nation don't care about that. Whereas in Camden, you have been, they've been waiting for you since the day you were born. You were mm. promised everything that you were going to get to the day you were born. I wanted him to get more high school pressure. I wanted him to face more high school competition. I wanted him to have more of a of of a of a give and take in terms of of his ability. Not him dominating. Quite frankly, not him dominating New Jersey. He he was one of the what's him wheelchair. What we're gonna toss it up. He the best player or whatever the case may be. That's not it. What I want, what I wanted to see out of him was a level of, a level of skill development that showed me it didn't matter what he was facing here was because my skill level is what it is. I I had the kid from Don Bosco ahead of wheelchair and him easily. I had the Harper, the, the, um, the Harper kid above them when those guys were seniors. The skill right. level was such a different thing. I think that, in my opinion, I think that the way he played, I always said that even when me and you had these conversations, that I wish he was at least six five. The way he played, Jay Gildress. You, you get what I'm saying? Like I see, five. like the uh, the the style he played, the crafty style he played. I wish he was like six five. You get what I'm saying? But I also think that he falls into the trap of sometimes we see these kids and and we and we think about how their fathers were. And when we don't see that, and we're going to get into that next. You get what I'm saying? Good point. Good point. When we don't see that, it, it, it tends to feel like that we're getting a letdown. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And But I also think that his game should have been – he should have ran the point more, solely ran the point at Camden instead of being moved to really have to score the ball. You get what I'm saying? Because that wasn't going to translate to the next level with him being able to do it like that. Exactly. So, so yeah, I, 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 I understand that. That's why I said that he should be. He should have been like six five. Now let's get to what do you think about his future? NBA, G League. What you thinking? I'm not gonna. I'm not going to write his future off yet. There's no way I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say a team who has already excelled to this point that he's at now that I'm gonna mm-hmm. totally just 
dead as ticket. And you know that I would dead a ticket in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm not going to just dead a ticket. What I'm looking for him, this, and I, I, I'll put it like this. Next season, if we reconvene this, I will let you know if it's Istanbul. Mm. I will let you know if he's if if that's where next stop is Turkey. I will say mm. that, but I'm okay. gonna hold that off because I I almost and I'm only giving you me. I love I love the elixir of failure. Pour it on me and watch your heart in me. And I mm. take this season, and this is my humble assessment for him as a failure. I want to see that gem on him. Mm. Once I see mm-hmm. that gym on him and I see that shot on him, because he has to want to. Mm-hmm. He has to want to. Now it's about to work. Hey, guess what? It all didn't go smooth then or whatever. Fine. I'm not that it's not the end all be all. A lot of people didn't get it the first time out. Don't let nobody trick you into thinking you have to go run off and do something to prove what other people's dreams is about your life. I pray Indeed. that he doesn't he doesn't fall victim for that. That somebody has to he has to prove something to somebody else that he needs to go somewhere right now and do something right now because somebody else thought that he was a one and done. Don't uh, fall victim for that, young man. What I want him to do is go bury that gym. I need a thousand in the morning. I need a thousand in the afternoon, and I need a thousand at night. Mm. Now come, now come walk away from, come walk away from here. And I dare you to back up now. And now when people have to play him, he's fast, he's strong. And now, because now that, that first defender is up even closer. Now he, when he, cause he's great at angles and getting to the basket. Now it's a, it's a, he has that extra space between the big man and the defender that's in front of him to where now he gets to play on those angles and those banks and those half a hooks are now a more clear picture to the basket as opposed to they not playing him and he's forcing it down the lane and he's coming to him now and they're waiting on it. Indeed. All right. All right. All right. Next up. (laughs) Ronnie James declares. Yeah. And he threw up the peace sign. Good decision. Bad decision. What's your take? Give it to me. Okay, so my my mine's is twofold on Bronny James, and I'll, I'll get into you and I dynamic on Bronny James in a second. But Bronny James, I, I mean, this is the thing that I think I've had in debate about Bronny James for the longest, in direct correlation to DJ Wagner. DJ Wagner was a person that was reviewed as supposed to be this top five star blue chip prospect, one and done number one, number two point guard in the nation. He's supposed to be this. He averaged this amount of high school, this, this, that, and the third. That's one assessment. Now, when I looked at Bronny James, I never looked at Bronny James as a one-and-done player or as a star or as the out-front person. I always looked or I evaluated Bronny James' game for intangibles of how he – can he can be on a team and the attributes that he displays that can make him a commodity. He can defend two positions. He shoots, he can shoot the ball, highly athletic, high IQ. I gave the player comp a Gary Payton too for body type, athleticism, lineage, and understanding that he is also a jersey seller. He's, and again, let's speak about this being the business that it is. Wherever he goes, the cameras are going to follow. Wherever he goes, the media is going to follow. Not mm-hmm. to say that the NBA doesn't get this, but I'm trying to say if I had a spot that's 12, 13, 14, 15 on the bench, and I get to bring somebody in who I know is going to sell 3 million jerseys, let's speak about this honestly. Let's speak about this honestly. Those... And so everybody want to get into nepotism and nepotism. I, and I see that as one of your points up here, mm-hmm. right? But nepotism and this kid is two different things. I don't think that Bronny James is an NBA ready player today per se. But what I do believe is I do believe his makeup, he can bump around and he can find a niche because of the intangibles. He's used to playing with high level talent. He's used to not being ball dominant. He's used to being 
um, a non-stop of the ball. So he's a he's a pass first player. And we can't never forget the IQ comes from probably the highest IQ ever. So I think that he knows that he can space the floor. I can get into a spot. I can make my open shot. But also, even more still, I can defend two positions. And I already know the NBA life, which is another thing that we're not going to really put into context. And whereas we don't got to worry about him. So when we're going to invest a certain pick into a player and everything like that, we don't got to worry about his intangibles. I asked the guy this. I said, have you ever heard that kid speak? And a dude stopped me. He said, you know what? I don't think I ever heard him talk. I said, you got to understand this. That's the training or the polish or whatever that he has. So I think that he has NBA or pro um, attributes that should be looked at or viewed differently. Not as him being a star, not as him being an all-star, but him being a pure 100% contributor. And I'm not talking about now, but down the road. All right. My analysis. I first saw him in seventh grade. I went down um, to North Carolina and for the Nationals, and um, his coach had uh, – had, had invited me down there because the plan was to get him and DJ to play against each other in Atlantic City in eighth grade. You know what I'm saying? But something happened down in the AC showcase and we never could get that done. But everything was set. You get what I'm saying? To get it done or whatever. So when I first saw him play, I immediately said to myself, he's not aggressive enough for me. I didn't see no north and south, a lot of east and west. You get what I'm saying? I didn't see the the uh the type of passion for his game that that I thought he should have. And he's also one of the only players that I've seen that kind of got a thing of where everybody kept saying, We're gonna wait and see. We're gonna wait and see. When he was in elementary school, or are we gonna wait and see the high school? Then he get to high school his freshman year, or we gonna wait to see. Um, when he gets uh, a sophomore, then he get a sophomore. We gonna wait to see to a senior year. It should click. Then he becomes a senior. Then we gotta wait and see when he get to college. Now he's in college, and it's like the same thing. We gotta wait to see when he gets to the NBA. Now that being said, I do feel like if I'm his dad and 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 and, and all that kind of stuff, if I'm his dad. I'm not going to college. I wouldn't even play that game with them. If I'm his dad, we training, we going to the G League, and they're gonna, they're gonna. The, my last game that we saw me was as an amateur was that good shooting game in the McDonald's All American game. After that game, I'm out of there. Y'all not gonna see me in college. Y'all not gonna get a chance to to, to analyze me. Y'all gonna get the next thing time you are gonna see me is gonna be at. One of those, um, one of those uh, G League camps or whatever the rules was. You're not gonna see me doing none of that, bro. What you like to say, Mike? On one of them buses somewhere. That go yeah, yeah. We are gonna be in Idaho. We are gonna be the Idaho Cedar Gardens or whatever they call themselves. We gonna be. You we gonna you be the team by the color of the unis, right? Indeed. <laughs> but I'm not taking that chance in college, bro. You get what I'm saying? Now, I want to see more passion from him about the game of basketball. And I know he went through a life-changing situation. So that has to be also brought into consideration because the confidence, like the same thing what I was talking about with DJ, the confidence thing is very serious when you're a guard. Yeah. And your health confidence is on a whole nother level. Like I never had a heart attack before. You know what I'm saying? I had something tragically sudden happen to me. So I understand this kid might be dealing with some PTSD. He don't, he don't know running down the court if that could happen again at any time. You get what I'm saying? So, but I wouldn't be playing around with college no more. No portals, no nothing. I, I, I got to go, bro. I got to go. Get, because I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like, I got to go. I, I think what you said is uh, uh, got, it got a lot of merit to it. Yeah, because sometimes we let people see too much early, and, and and then and then and then we get stuck in that in that trend like Amani Bates. Yeah, Amani we, Bates. We, we like, spoke we spoke about that a lot. We spoke about that a, a few times about you know um hey it's it's any it's it's anything it's it's easier 
it's easier for you to, you know, I don't want to use the word you trick the GMs or nothing like that, but no, that's what it is. Let's be real. Like you, like, like, like you got a better chance if they if they figure out that you're not good after they didn't paid you for three years. Like, 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 like that you don't cut the that you don't cut it, but you got some money in the in the bank. Why well, I'm gonna mm-hmm. go somewhere for for a little smaller bag to play around in college for a couple of years, and now you get to really analyze my game. No, yeah. but but I, what I like to also look at when I looked at him in college, what I also like to look at is he was a bench kid after he came off of the heart situation. He mm-hmm. eventually, for his defense, mm-hmm. cracked the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. He cracked the starting the lineup, and then they had him off the ball to when they actually put him on the ball with people that's there that are going to be one kid is going to be a top 10 pick and the other kid should find itself um into the pro ranks as well in terms of their guards and i'm mm-hmm. talking about Kyer and um i was going to skip me um the kid named um boogie well um um it's gonna it's, it's i'm i'm gonna skip i'm gonna miss his name right now but i think he's a pro kid too or whatever he's a pro player too i don't know about him being necessarily drafted but i could easily see him eventually making a team um, mm-hmm. But he eventually, the coach eventually took him from the bench, put him in the lineup, and then gave him a, a, a gave him a role because. And when you hear the, the USC coach speak about it, was because he he defended on our team at the highest level, but also he extended and did the right thing the most. And I think that's the part that we're we want him to be this instant thing that we shook up in this bag and we spit it out when he was his father. I never looked at him like he was an A1 guy. He's not He's not the guy I'm giving the ball to. What he is, is he's on the court where we got this little guy who get into the cup and we couldn't stop him from getting to the cup. He's a specialist. Like We're going to put him in, we're going to defend, and then eventually I think he's going to find his way, like a niche type thing. Gary Payton II. He didn't get drafted. He knocked around the G League for a while. He knocked around mm-hmm. the G League for a while. Eventually, he got his shot together a little bit, but he defended at a high level. He His athleticism was at a high level. Then eventually, he found the niche, and it became something to where as, where as he could, you could put him on the floor in a certain, like call it a package or a role mm-hmm. at that individual mm-hmm. time. Something like the guard that we can't let Steph stick. Or Clay has gotten some fouls. We don't necessarily have another. And Wiggins is already sticking prime score guy A. Let's take him out. He's strong enough to stick the bigger off-ball guy with him not being of size. Like a niche type of guy. Not this no, dude no. that he's ever going to score 20. I don't never think that. I get that point. And the final point on him, and then we're going to move on. If he's not LeBron James Jr., is all this even under consideration? Not no. only from you, I'm just talking about under GM's period. No. Let's not even go. Let's not. But, but hold, but hold on. But, hold uh, on. Uh, uh-huh. but let's not go ahead and, for one, it, it, it is a no. Mm-hmm. It's a no. Mm-hmm. But I cannot ever fault nepotism when it works indeed, in our indeed. favor. Indeed, indeed. I cannot indeed. turn away from that. And we cannot sit back and say, so we got some people right now that they're 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 coaches and they're coaches' sons and and this, that, and the third, and now they don't went ahead and they already the videographer, they already on the NBA bench, mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm, already mm-hmm. got to do these things. So Indeed. now I'm not gonna look and turn a, turn Good away point. from him from what it is that he's getting now as the benefit of his father being um the one, two best players to ever play. And mm-hmm. I'm only gonna say two because we know who number one. Okay, okay, okay. Next up. NJSIAA, charter school rule. Now, it's been a lot of whining this year about these charter schools smacking teams around. And I want your take on, should the charter schools be put in their own division, taken out of the public school division, and put into a charter school division? So then we'll have, the public division, the parochial division, and the charter division. What's your take on it? Was they in the was they in the, um their own division when they was losing? <laughs> Get your program up. 
So let me tell you, let me give let me give you a quick tidbit on that, right? The the charter school was okay when you went and you got the sticker kid over at the charter school because your school, whether it be let's call it social, so let's call it social, let's call it academic, let's call it environment, wasn't up to par for parent. So you was able to stick said kid in charter school, he came and he played for your school. Mm-hmm. So what you guys never thought about doing was for one taking over more of your school outside of basketball to create create a foster environment where these people were going to be comfortable with them being there in the first place. So what Mm -hmm. happened when the charter school got a team? You want to know what? I didn't necessarily want my kid going there anyway. So Mm -hmm. now the place that's having a better education, that has a better environment, also has a team. So those three, four kids that were stuck in the city in the charter school, now we want our own team. You want to know, we better than the team that we were traveling to go to anyway. Mm. I'm going to play here at the charter school. My, my main, go ahead. Um, excuse go ahead. Me, my, my, my main issue with what we tend to do is if we can't beat it, we want to dismantle it. And mm. I'm not from that. I'm from mm. attack it. Mm. When, when, when I was in high school, um, teams played St. Benedict's. Mm-hmm. And guess what? St. Benedict's wasn't winning. Mm. When I was in high school, teams played these teams. And they went out. I don't know why. We didn't fear competition. And you want to know what? I love that you had the name. Mm. I love, I loved it. I actually loved it. I actually loved it. And me and my friends would say it. It's impossible for guys who they ate today. I may have came to play today. I may have not even had a meal. Possibly understand my level of desire. Mm. There's no way. Mm. So I don't I don't want to see the charter schools in their own. I don't want to see all this separation that makes something easier for somebody else to get these false championships or whatever. <laughs> How you get your team to be able to run a play all the way through. <laughs> now, my my thing of it is is what you touched on in the beginning, like. When y'all was alley ooping and y'all was blowing them by fifty, and y'all was inviting them to y'all little tournaments, so and y'all little homecoming, so y'all crowd could be cheering, and y'all blowing them out and smacking them around, and and then they used to get in the the, the uh, state tournament, and they was out in the first round, y'all smacked them by forty five, y'all ain't want them to have their own division then. You get what I'm saying? Now they didn't figure out, uh, um, uh, that. Oh, we can we can we can we can maneuver this way a little bit and we can maneuver that way. We can use the same rules that the public schools was using our school for to make a powerhouse. And let's call it what it is. Mm-hmm. A lot of people mad because Bofton figured out another way to win some championships. And now oh, yeah. and, and, and now and now and, and now they feel in some kind of way. Like let them kids go out. Now, what I say was fair. Get them there 20 years of dominance, and then we can check. Then we could go to the rules. Y'all was smacking them around for 20. Get them they 20 years. Get them they, get them they 20 years of dominance. And then we could go to the rule book and say, all right, y'all had 20. They had 20. Now let's change the rules. Now we can change the rule. Hey Mike, remember when we were at this is years ago, right? We went up to um, we was in a dun. And they took an article out in the um, they took an article out in the um, what they call it the you know the program that you get. And yeah, but I mean, no, Pat's. no, me and Ray Miller talked about that when he came on about when they were trying to get St. Pat's. Yeah, they were trying to get St. Pat's out of there. Like I ain't win all of that to participate in the Union County tournament. Remember the very next page, an old St. Pat's alumni had said, "Uh, uh-uh, I remember them years of y'all beating us." Now, yeah. Whatever I yeah, the public school people, they they bullies. They think they just supposed to change all the rules in the, in the New Jersey uh, uh, Federation to, to fit public schools. Like, come on, man. Like, like we want to play too. Let them kids enjoy their time and get them. I say you don't even got a 20. Get them like 10 more years of dominance, and then we could go to the rule books and say, you know what? Let, let's change the rules now. Hey, hey, listen. Listen, right? This is the part that I never really would agree with anyway. You group four teams, you sitting up there with your one, your with your one school in the town having self. You can't produce <laughs> me, you can't produce me a solid team. I have an issue with that anyway. 
Mm. Listen, I go to too many games, right? Mm. While I walk in, I turn to the person who invited me, and I'm like, oh, this is varsity? And they tell me, yes, this is varsity. And I watch your varsity team not be able to run a play. Now, you know, we go by our spotlight days. I don't seen kids that's eight years old. I don't watch the coach from the whiteboard do something. And I watch babies run a play. I watch your varsity <laughs> not be able to run a play. So how about we do this, right? Let's stop thinking that our kids don't have the attention span to execute and to execute and do, and let's start demanding this certain level of execution. I tell people about one of my favorite coaches all the time is Mr. Colicchio from uh, Linden. Yeah, he has. You want to know why? He's, yeah, yeah. You want to know why? Now he's at, uh, I know he's yeah, at, but yeah. I always associate him with Linden first. Mm-hmm. And um, whether it was the Rodney Zamores or the the Wally Dixons. Or two where he had the little guards in them. Yeah, Desmond Wade had, and uh Lampley. Yeah, to so whether he had the big the big guys or whatever yeah. down yeah. in the middle, or to whether he had the little guys. It's a certain standard that they had to play by and a and a hardness that they had to play by, regardless. So he won with any type of team. This is a public school. He won with any type of team. You know why? It's a certain thing that you demand. A certain mm-hmm. quality mm-hmm. or a certain expectation that you mm-hmm. demand. It's mm-hmm. not all the time about being somebody's friend. Mm-hmm. You want to know what kids like? Truth. Realness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be truthful with me. Be real with me. Be honest with me. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to be my buddy. I will accept discipline if I respect you. Man, oh, that's a good quote right there. Good quote. So if you don't want to, if you don't show us enough respect in yourself to command a certain product. Oh my goodness! I went to games this year. Oh, some people I don't even I, listen. I don't even want to hear it. I only do, <laughs> I only do powerhouse basketball. I have no time for what it is that you're putting out there and calling it varsity. It's not. All right, it's not. Thanks. Let's move on. Is Rutgers Dylan Harper AJ Belly? Is Rutgers a fad? Will it just be a one year thing? Or will this turn into something? If they got the right minds up there, it should turn into something. But right now, if I had to get percentages, I'm going to go 60 fat, 40 not. And here's why, right? You had a conscious effort to recruit Mr. Harper for years. I would go to games. I would see the whole Rutgers coaching staff. I would see all the Rutgers players. I would see them look like they done brought a student bus up there. To <laughs> I'm like, you, uh-huh. but you, to me, you did it the right way. You brought a person up there um, in terms of assistant coaches that had AAU ties that allowed for you to venture out further than, than anyone expected to get that level of ca- uh, caliber of talent in Ace Bailey. So you had your ties to Atlanta. You had your mm-hmm. ties to them. And you were able to have a level of symmetry there that they never had at Rutgers. I used to watch them go get them guards from down the shore. But as a prime example, you're going to go get this one of these guards from down there at CBA, and you're not going to get Khalid Kersey at your best. I'm trying to tell you, it's a different thing. You want to play Big East basketball. Uh, and I'm not going to see and going to say I never liked any of the guards from CBA. But in the Big East, I prefer to have me a dog. So I prefer to have me what that level of uh, you gonna bring you gonna bring in the um, the um, Syracuse guard and you gonna come and you gonna come and you gonna show me Adrian Archery. I want to come show you my guy from my area, from my area. Mm-hmm. You want to come Georgetown? You want to bring me David Edwards? I want to come show you my guy from my era. Oh, mm-hmm. Providence, you want to come bring me Sham God? I want to show you the guy from where you can't bring these um these kids who don't know about free lunch. You, they didn't want to get dirty. They didn't want to come to the trenches. Dylan Harper is the anomaly. Don Bosco, NBA lineage, and this, that, and third. That's not real. Do not fall into that. That's going to fall into your lap thing. Mm. Allow for those assistant coaches to stay who they are. Allow them to keep their nose to the street. And allow them to keep them AAU ties. And you want to know what? We need to get that proper NIL money. The money is going to also dictate the way this thing is going to go. So, New Jersey, all us big time people in New Jersey, let's get them donations together. But also, you know, let's get the parking together up there too. Indeed. Um, 
I'm excited because for years I always wanted something in New Jersey, like some excitement at the rack. I haven't seen it since um what's the black coach they had? Um um Dag, man. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna make me so upset today. Um yeah, but that uh who is that? That's Quincy Doobie and them. Who is this? Yeah, Quincy Doobie and them. Back, back. We're gonna talk about Bobby Doobie and them. Um, that was probably the last time. Um, when he had uh, that's Doobie, that's Lamanzana in them, right? Yeah. So that's probably the last time that we're gonna really speak about uh, Rutgers at the height. And hey, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's because you want to get these guys who don't want to come to the area. That's gonna give you the dogs that you need to compete in the Big East. Once you put um, when you put a Brandon Knight on a bench, mm -hmm. Brandon Knight knew the crevices to go into that pulled you out the rabbit out your hat that you got now. Them two that you got up right there could easily be let's could easily be lottery picks. We could go even further lottery. These two kids could easily be top 10 selections in a year from now. Rutgers, you need to capitalize on what is about to become. Do not put them in that little gym up there in New Brunswick. Bring them down to Newark. Put them on that pro court. Put them on that pro court. Bring everybody in to see them. Allow for the assistant coaches. Allow for the assistant coaches to go dig into those cracks and crevices and create and keep those AAU alliances going to continue to blossom that program. And I think they did a good job with starting off with the assistant coach. Um, up there, that's a that's a legendary Jersey name, and and the night kid, and um, having him there, I believe that was the catalyst for what you see right now going on today. Oh yeah, he definitely goes hard. Um, Harper could get busy too, and Bailey like potential is through the roof. Everybody talk about the kid at Mount Verde, but uh, to me, he the best player in the country right now. Let like talk about that, especially on another. He he kind of give me a little. T Mac vibes a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That like that scary, that that scary potential. Great, like we don't know where this. Comp. That's a great player comp, right? Here. Yeah, like like we don't know where this thing might go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like 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 he could be one of the best, the, depending on if he got that switch to really turn it on all the time. You get what I'm saying? I hate the Big Ten. I hate that conference. You know what I'm saying? Of, I just, of course, most we're gonna teams, hate that conference with what they deprived us of and what they took from us. Of course, we no, nah, no, nah, I hate that conference because it seemed like most of the teams got two basketball players and then and then a bunch of linemen. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's <laughs> I'm just being real. Like it don't it's it's not, bro. You're not watching. I never heard you talk about us uh, uh, since they had Big Dog. You're not watching no Purdue Iowa game, bro. You ain't never called me and said yo Purdue and Iowa playing. <laughs> you're not watching that, bro. No, like, you're not watching Purdue Iowa. <laughs> you're not Zach watching Andy. that. It's ugly. You, you want to see no big Zach Andy? No, it's ugly, bro. It's ugly. <laughs> Nobody's not watching that, bro. You get what I'm saying? So no doubt. I hope that his um his style of play, I, I think it can translate because his skill level. What he showed me was that. He was different when I saw him in the McDonald's game and how dominant he was with those with his peers on the floor. Like mm -hmm. he looked like he was on a whole nother level than mm -hmm. they was when he was on that um Harper was on that McDonald's at that McDonald's game. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, he definitely going to be one and done. It's going to be very very important on how Rutgers like you said capitalize with them being there. I wish they could build a whole new facility in a year. Get some, <laughs> get but some said, stuff. But look, it's funny. This is the year that they're gonna get the facility for. This is what and what I mean, and what I even mean more so than that. And the reason why I don't want them to go ahead and play them games up there in that gym up there, and I want to bring them downtown north is because I want them to show recruits the uh, the bigger, the better, the louder, the other environment. Not to say I don't want them to get some teams. And get them up there in their little gym and be able to molly wop them in the little gym. I think that's important. If I had some real huge games, like I caught, I caught like a I catch me in Michigan in one of them, depending on whoever that top echelon is, one of them games, I'm gonna get them at the rack. I would. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I will play them games in Newark at the pro facility 
because I want to show recruits what we what we truly are about. And I would then I would do a little thing because I want them I want to show them something else. You got an eighteen thousand seat arena, right? You got uh, I think it's like thirty public schools in Newark. I'm not sure. Let's say thirty public schools in Newark. I would literally outside of the 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 main bowl of the arena, every other ticket is free. I would get that to every kid. I would get that to every uh, high school kid. It's all those tickets are free. Mm. I would pack that mm. thing out because I'm trying to create a different environment. I want a different look. I need to change the face of it. So I would. I mean, they're not going to go all the way to North because that's Seton Hall spot. But what what I what I will say, as a matter of fact, uh, yes, it wasn't Eddie. Let's Jordan. go to Green. Hold up, Let's hold go up. To it, Bank. It, it, it wasn't Eddie Jordan. It was Guy Waters. Guy Waters had them ball. That was a good Gary one. Waters had them you balls. must have just looked that up. I'm mad that you got that Gary Waters. Guy Waters, Guy Waters had them balling. Now, yeah, Gary Wood, Gary that's Waters the had time when defense. that's the time when I used to like Syracuse and we were shook when we came up in there. Like that's Gary when... Waters had to play in that defense. <laughs> you had to play in that defense. All right, next up. Next up. Julius Irvin was trash, according to you. Now I didn't say this. According to you, Julius Irvin was trash. Now that now now me being from Trenton, and we used to get a lot of Philly games. You grew up us being lucky that we was like uh uh uh, uh geographical um in the middle. So we got the New York games and we got the Philly games. It ain't that many places in New Jersey that get both. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, you got. So you we got all that. love Doc. Down there. Now you're gonna have to explain to this world, Mr. World, how you thought Julius Irvin was trash. All right. So I'm like any other kid when I was young. That's Dr. J. You love Dr. J. That's Dr. J. Like that's Dr. J. Julius Irvin, Dr. J. So you know some of the things that I like to do from time to time. So they had the 75th anniversary team come up. Right, so the seventies, the top seventy-five players of all time. So what I did was I got the seventy-five player list, and I decided to do seventy-five players worth of homework. So I started YouTube and every again. I'm you know our age, so I watched Dr. J play with the Sixers, him, Mo Cheeks, uh, the Boston Strangler, Andrew Tony, uh, Bobby Jones. You know, I. Um, Charles Jones. I watched them six team, so let's not act like I didn't see them play. So some people want to say this is the end of Doc's career and all this. I'm not speaking about that. I'm not speaking about that. Okay. I did my homework. I went and watched Dr. J's games from the ABA, M MVP seasons, all the way through retirement. Dr. J dribbled the ball with one hand. He routinely jumped off the wrong foot. He would shoot wild. I mean, Dr. J's skill level, like I've 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 literally probably seen kids that's probably like 14. Dr. J should have been like a maybe like a, a, a tight end, like go across the middle, use all them hops, catch touchdowns, like a grunt or something like that. Man, knock it off, bro. Like you talking about the guy that is is the reason that Jordan and the other guys pattern their games after him, bro. Like you, you talking about like Magic your game Johnson that's a dude who jumped off the wrong foot to shoot layups. Bro, the skill we they, they didn't have skilled trainers and stuff like they got now, bro. Like Mike, when I watch these guys you know, develop their games on the playgrounds, bro. True. When I watch Jerry West play, I can easily see skill level. I can see a one dribble, two dribble pull up. Pick a pick a player. So let me not be biased. Pick a player from his era. Just say um, a name. Um, um, you saw Magic Johnson. Okay, you can see Magic Johnson. You can see skill level. You can see a six-nine person, and you can see skill level. So let's go a teamy. Let's go world be free. I ain't calling world be free trash. <laughs> so you just basing it strictly on his on on his on, skill on, level is very because because very his skill tough. level didn't look like other somebody else's skill level. I wish you could run a clip of his game of him playing against seven foot three Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's sad, man. He has no skill level whatsoever. Forget moves off the dribble. He shot the ball with two hands. I mean, literally shot it with two hands. Oh my God, he used to do that little stutter and the, the overhand crossover. 
Squirt is blast, man. Don't like, the wrong foot. They didn't have Kyrie handles in the 80s I and the 70s. Man. I didn't say that about World Be Free. I didn't say that about Jer Jerry West. Pick somebody. You can go back and watch a Dave Bing highlight tape. You can go watch um you can go watch um Earl of Pearl. Um you I mean you go you go watch these people and you can see a certain level of skill level. Dr. J was very wild. Super bunnies. Oh, you could jump real high, whatever like that. But the older I got, the lesser his game got. So when I did my little everybody on the 75th anniversary team, and let's stop that. Them not the 75 best players we ever seen. Let's stop giving a ceremonial thing. No, they're not. All those guys. Let's start getting rid of them. That's what we should do. Let's so do you, a 75. So you're trying to X out mad people off the 75 team? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Yes. Yes. So who got to go? Who got to go? Dr. J has to go. Let's off the 75 over. greatest? Yeah. He, he the 75 best players you ever seen playing in the NBA? Yeah, because uh, I'm I'm comparing him to his era. You can't compare I, him. He played to somebody not what, now. That's not what we're talking about. These are the 75 best players we ever saw play. Is he one of the 75 best? All right, better yet. Is Dr. J better than Glenn Big Dog Robinson? What would you, you say? I asked you a question. I said, yeah, Doc was better yeah. than Glenn Robinson, man. Oh my God. All Glenn yeah. Robinson did was shoot oh jumpers, oh man. You scared her. My, <laughs> that was Glenn Robinson in college. You just that said was Dr. J was better than Big Dog. If I took Glenn Big Dog Robinson and I dropped him off of UMass with Dr. J, Dr. J, I mean, come on, man. This is Mike, man. No. <laughs> it's, it's not even close. Yeah, Man, I can't believe you comparing these to Doc Julius Irvin, bro. Are you serious? Oh, uh, you talking about nostalgia? You talking about the feel good stuff? You know I'm not that guy. You know I'm not that guy. This no, is no, crazy, Glenn, no, Glenn this Big Dog Robinson. No, no, he's not better than Glenn Big Dog Robinson. And I mean, I'm shocked and I'm kind of scared that you even said that you really, you really think that. Like you really think that you gotta be kidding me? I no, can't man. believe it, y'all. That you disrespecting this, Mike, this man, the fish, that, me, the fish that stole Pittsburgh and all that stuff. I loved it too. I loved it. I loved it. I understand we little we look at these people here. <laughs> man, I loved it. But I grew up and I can watch the games. I can watch them. I can literally go see. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god! Like, what is? What are you doing? One thing no. I give you, one thing I give you credit for. When, once I got older and I had the scout eye, it was definitely uh, uh, here go Lonnie Hill talking about Doc ain't better than Glenn Robinson. And he's from Atlantic City. I can't believe he said this. It is what it is, Mister Hill. Just telling you. <laughs> Yo, one thing I can say: once you get older and you get the scout eye, uh, things, 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 things can be a little different. I ain't gonna go that far and disrespect Doc, no. Doc of was course you're not. You from Trent and you love Dr. J. All I'm right, all Trent. right, all right. Next up, and it might be our last joint. I think you definitely gonna like this. Should college basketball have an age cap? Listen. Should college basketball have an age cap? Should they say at a certain age you can't play no more? Hmm. I'm gonna um. I want to um, temper, temper what um, what it is that I was saying this, but like at a at a certain point, I be do believe that it's almost like a preparatory schools where they have the prep team and high school team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like almost it could be something like that, like a because I give you the the, the the example of the kid that we have up here right now from Oakland, um. When he was a sophomore in college, them kids was in the sixth and seventh grade. He was a sophomore in college when they was in the sixth and seventh grade. So what we have is a disproportionate um, amount of kids who who they went, they did everything that they supposed to do. Now, you, you get your injury and stuff like that. Those things are unfortunate. I'm not saying you're not supposed to get your injury year. I'm not saying that certain things you're not supposed to get the extra year. I'm not telling you not to be able to live your dream. But it's a kid that I believe is like 27 um, <laughs> playing college basketball. Like 27, 28 years old playing college basketball. But he made all the threes or, he made all the threes or whatever like that against Kentucky. But what I found a little different in watching the games is people 
wanted to say, oh, those kids, all these five stars, they should have been able to do this and beat them, beat beat them more more older or seasoned kids anyway. I said, hey, have you ever played your big brother or your father in the backyard in basketball? You know, you you definitely better than them. But what's your big brother or your father do? Man, they get you in a post. They get you back you all down, bone you a couple times, shoot that little hook over you, one nothing, and they you come get it. They hack you up a little bit, and it has nothing to do with your skill. It had nothing to do with who's better. It has something to do with I'm physically more mature. But he hit seven trays. I'm not it had to be it, some skill. I'm not – I'm not saying that it wasn't no skill to it, but what I'm also saying is it wasn't necessarily his seven trees as much as it was the other kid that the post kid was, um, and this is the part I think people misunderstood. They thought I was t- talking about him because he was so old, mm-hmm. but the post kid or whatever was just more physical than the, the the little 18-year-old freshman big man that they had at Kentucky or whatever like that. That was really the, the the point of the game is that they were able to control the boards where Kentucky thought they was going to be able to out-rebound them. But to answer the question that, that we have today um, in the spotlight is, should it be an age? At a certain point, we're going to have to cap this thing. At a certain point, you can't be 25, man. Come on. you can't, Think about in college football. Chris Winkie, I, I, I think it should be some nuance to it. Winky went and he played baseball, mm-hmm. and then he came from playing baseball and he decided to play football. Winky was married and everything when FSU won the national championship. <laughs> he had kids and all types of stuff. He was married and everything. Uh, so I think if you came from somewhere else, or you did, you was in the armed services, or you tried your hand at something else, and then you did this. All right, all bets off. But it comes to a point where. You're not gonna transfer and get another year, and you went and you did this. You got another year. The next thing you know, we got these. We got this. It's, it's an unfair advantage in terms of physical maturity, in my opinion. So yeah, but I think it got a lot to do with the one and done era, and, and then kids going in and out. So these other teams had to combat it with going in the portal and getting those older kids where they could fight against those kind of squads. You get what I'm saying? And the portal and the portal is wide open. So I'm trying to figure out how long can you stay in the portal? Mike, I don't I don't that's a that might be a segment. I don't know all the portal rules. How many times <laughs> did you go in the portal? So like, think, think, like, like, yeah, let's say you don't get out when, when you go through the first time. How long can you stay in it? Can you go back in next year? Like, can you that's just what I'm go- saying. I don't think I know all the portal rules. Like, and if I do go in the portal this year, and let's just say I went from Kentucky and I went to Indiana, and you know what? I don't like it in these. Can I go back in the portal again and just say, you want to know what? I'm going to UConn. And do you want I'm tired of UConn? Can I go in the portal again? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So now that – um um. This old thing ain't going nowhere, bro. No, no, no. It's an adjustment that needs to be made. But it's something that we didn't speak about here today that I want to kind of make people aware when they want to assess and be critical of one and done. And I have a whole nother philosophy that I got or opinion, I should say, on the whole one and done thing. And don't don't fall for the media enforced narrative of one and done. What the NBA does not want is they do not want these kids, for one, for one, them having to really evaluate talent. They prefer them to sit in school so they can get the better looks and they can do all this stuff. When it should be a person like you that's evaluating talent that should be good enough to see potential. So what we drafting now is we're drafting off potential. But here's the truth of the matter is, it's the money. They don't want Mike to come to the table Mike get the first contract when he's 18. Mike first contract he get the um the three with the four year option and he got that for this X amount of millions. When Mike contract ended or whatever, basically he was 21. Mike got max. Mike's next contract that he got that went to that three, that four, that four year option or whatever that Mike got max or whatever like that. Mike made the All Star team now. He's only he's only 24 years old and now he's eligible for super max. Mike got the five-year Supermax deal or whatever, and now the Supermax deal, he's a star in the league. Mike is now um, went from 24 years old. Mike now 29. Mike is in his prime. Mike going to go Supermax again. 
Mike done got super max again. He's 29 years old, and now he got the five-year again. Mike got the five-year again. Uh, he's 34. He's kind of old, but, you know, he's still kind of good. So now we're going to give out these three-year, 50-plus million-dollar deals we get with these guys that's in the 30s. Now we look up, oh, my goodness, LeBron James, billionaire. Kevin Garnett, $860 million. Russell Westbrook, 600 some million. James Harden, 700 some million. What we did was we transferred the wealth. And now we have a situation where we come up with the new Seattle-based team that's coming, with the um, the Las Vegas-based team coming, where now we have these, quite frankly, these young, ultra-rich black guys who now do not have to come in with these other partners where they have the money now to buy to be their own now. We done gave the wealth to them to the point where, and we're speaking about NBA salaries. We haven't turned around and said, oh, Nike has gave them this much. Adidas has gave them this much. And all the other endorsements. They want to slow down the contracts. They want to they mm -hmm. try to bring down how many times you can come back to the pot. So, of course, they want to go ahead and diminish one and done and get one and done out of here and stuff like that, and they want to be able to evaluate more like anything else. they trying to assess risk. they trying to mitigate the risk. So if they get more chances, like you said, to see a person, now they can mitigate the possibilities of getting something wrong or having mm -hmm. these bad evaluations. When, to tell you the truth, you should be picking me off my potential. You should be preparing me on what my potential worth is or whatever like that. Because to tell you the truth, honestly, I'm still not getting my worth in what it is that I bring in terms of value anyway to begin with. So my real thing about one and done is not, it's more so they want to eliminate it or make it look bad because they want to eliminate how many times these guys are coming to the table, how many times they got to pay these guys this certain amount of money. Mm. And that's the truth of matter what is look look what look at um what Kawhi just got. <laughs> Kawhi just got, and this is off the the the, the three major knee surgeries. They just had to give him 51 million a season. Because mm. he's still good. Is he Kawhi from Toronto? Of course not. But he's still good. And what if you ball man and you walk into the new arena? You can't walk into that new arena without Kawhi or Paul George. One of them mm. gotta get paid. Talk about so, it. Talk about it. Talk about man. it. Man, I want to tell y'all I enjoyed myself with you tonight, man. Indeed, brother. Indeed, brother. We're going to definitely pop back on because we got a whole lot more we ain't even tapping to. I'm saving that for oh, a couple listen, other listen, shows. Listen. I, know where, I know where you want to go with it. Yeah, I'm indeed. Wild, and, wild, and we ain't going to even let it. them know. We ain't going to even let nobody know. But we're going to definitely tap in, bro. You know what I mean? Thanks for coming on, bro. I give you, I'm going to send you highlights of this joint because it's definitely going to have a lot of highlights so you can post on your uh Social media platforms and all that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And like all my glasses, man. you weren't gonna out look out smart. <laughs> I love you, bro, man. Thanks for coming on, you, man. Um, I'm gonna highlight you later, bro. Later, later, later. No doubt, no doubt. Wow, man. Tough talk Tuesday, baby. Tune in next week. Well, we got a special one coming on next week. One of my other brothers, he got a a a, a, a little beef that he needs to settle about who's the best girls basketball team in the Mercer County area ever. And I'm going to bring him on the platform on next week on uh, Tough Talk Tuesday. But tomorrow, In the Spotlight podcast returns with special guest, um, Mercer County, um, McCorston legend, Mark Bass, also close to St. Joe's for over 20 years. And we're going to get into it, and we definitely going to talk about what happened at TCA um, and the whole nine. So tune in tomorrow night at 8 o'clock as Mark Bass visits in the in the Spotlight Podcast. This is Mike. I had a lot of fun tonight. Enjoy the rest of your night. Shalom.